Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hi guys. Okay. History Hit came out with a new video. Is this the most important Viking burial site in Britain? I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm excited. I love this channel. Almost at 100k. Well deserved. They, they must be like a, a sister channel to um, Timeline, which is an amazing, uh, amazing, amazing uh, YouTube channel because they have, what's his name? Th that awesome uh, British narrator. Anyways, let's get into it. Original link to the video, top of the description, right below that, link to the Discord. Click on it, send you right over there. If you don't get a roll right away, don't panic. I will promote you. Um, yeah, my name is Connor. If you are new, nice to meet you, sir or madam. And uh, yeah, I like to learn about things and watch stuff and hang out on YouTube. Let's go. If you aren't ready to learn, there's the door. Home X down the hall. Make me spaghetti. The jewel in the crown. That sounds like a must visit. It's back on the road to Repton in Derbyshire. Let's go. I know it's silly, but when I visit places that Beautiful were day. at the centre of kind of bloody dramatic events in our history, even though it's more than a thousand years ago, I still feel like it should be like that today, but of course now it just feels like a lovely, beautiful country church. Yeah, this sort of feels like as idyllic as you can get in England, doesn't it really? But it definitely was not like that in the <laughs> late 9th century. It was an important place, not the Vikings obviously had a huge impact here, but it was an important place well before they arrived. In fact, that's what they were doing here, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So even before the Viking Age, this was one of the most significant sites really in the Kingdom of Mercia. This was of royal, uh, ecclesiastical, religious uh, importance. There was a very wealthy monastery here dating back probably as early as the 7th century. Does any of the, that fabric still remain or was it all smashed up by the Vikings? So we know definitely some of it was uh, destroyed by the Vikings, but there is a part that still remains that the crypt, in this most of the, the churches is very modern, but <laughs> there are still... You're the only person I know, Kat, who refers modern. to very modern as the 14th century. Yeah, well, you know, I anything after the turn of the millennium is pretty much modern to me. <laughs> Which millennium? <laughs> So we're heading down to the crypt. Yeah, this is the Anglo-Saxon crypt. And this, so this is Anglo-Saxon now, these rocks here. I'm like, whoa. So this here, definitely, when we're now in the crypt, this is all part of the Mercian wow. monastery. Amazing, time travel. Yeah, absolutely. This, I mean, this is what's so extraordinary. This is what was here when the Vikings arrived. They would be touching the same pillars that we're touching today. And that's, that's so unusual. That's so amazing. I. I would be a weird one in the corner. Like, if I was with these guys, they'd be like, Connor, what are you doing? And I'd just be, like, sniffing the rock and, like, touching it and being like, this was here at that point? At Sorry. ...in Britain, isn't it? There's not much stone architecture left from, what, the, well, the 9th century, but this is got older. Yeah, so this is, this is 8th century, certainly, possibly even before that. So there's not much of that at all. So we, it's very uh, rare... In the whole country to have uh, evidence of that remaining. This is one of the most special early medieval bits of architecture in, in the UK. Yeah, definitely. And what's really nice as well is you can see things like traces of paint. So if you if you so imagine it, coloured. yeah, imagine it really vividly coloured, full of jewels, glittering gold candles. It must have been such a, an atmospheric place. I mean, it's special today, but more than a thousand years ago, even more so. And, and so this is where Mercia, which had been one of the, the most powerful Anglo-Saxon kingdom for, for periods, buried its kings. I mean, this was the holiest of the holy. Yeah, so several, we know that several of the uh, Mercian uh, dynasty, the royal dynasty, were buried here. And this crypt itself would have been uh, that mausoleum. So this would have been where those, uh, possibly in these alcoves here, would have had uh, essentially the remains of those kings. And people would come here as a pilgrimage, so much to visit. And this was all part of, of the, the bigger monastery uh, site, which was very wealthy. It was a double house monastery for men and women. Um, so there might have been a, a small town uh, around it as well. So this is, you can't really talk about things as a capital city, I guess, but this would have been one of the most important religious, political, 
royal sites in Mercia. Absolutely, and this would have been known far and wide, so a very deliberate place for the Vikings to attack. So this would have been filled with all sorts of riches, so there'd be a lot that they could take away, a lot of wealth here, but it was much more than that. It was a, a very much a political statement, knowing that it was such an important religious site. If you come and take that, then you're making a really big statement. It's like the Soviets sticking their kind of hammer, hammer and sickle flag on the Reichstag in 1945. What an amazing moment. We know about the Viking presence here thanks to extraordinary investigations done here by Professor Martin Biddle and his late wife, Bieta Scholby Biddle. From 1974, we started to dig beside the crypt, and very early on, we got dating evidence, and then we found. I had to make sure it was loud enough for you guys. I'm going back like 10 seconds. From 1974, we started to dig beside the crypt. And very early on, we got dating evidence. And then we found an enormous ditch. I mean, a whopper beside, right beside the church. And if you can imagine the church was there, the sort of angle of the, of the, of the church, the ditch was there. They were corner to corner. And this was, I mean, this is four meters deep, goodness knows how wide, we only got part of it. And we started to think, and we looked at the kind of pottery, not much, that was coming out of it, and it came to us that there was only one thing this could be. It would be part of the Viking winter camp of 873 to 4, which of course we know about from the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. And Martin Biddle and his team didn't only find the ditch, around the church, they found other evidence that proves the Vikings were here. So what else have you found at this site? So in addition to, to the ditch and all of that, the archaeologists excavating here in the 1970s and 80s found a lot of burials, and some of them were definitely Scandinavian or Viking burials. And actually, they are right here, and some of the most important right ones. Here. Yeah, so we're just wow. going to try and work out exactly where we are. So looking at the the map and the plan. So this is the church as okay, it is, yeah, that's yeah. the crypt. Yeah. Seven and eight, this oh, is right. the most They're important. They're right in here, aren't they? Yeah, this spot that we're standing on now yeah. uh, is probably the most, well, the best known, the most significant Viking grave in all of England. Right. This was where we had the so-called Repton warrior uh, buried and a younger man. To him. He was buried with uh, a lot of objects, which was a, a typical Scandinavian uh, burial rite as being buried with objects around you. Uh, that included a sword along his side, a Viking sword. He had a Thor's hammer around his neck. Yes, Thor's hammer around his neck. Yeah. The guy's a Viking. <laughs> Precisely. So, so that's, that's the sort of most obvious part of it. He had lots of other smaller objects, but he also... Seems pretty tall, or is that just me? It, it's hard to, I guess, kind of... ...had some really, really severe injuries on his body, so we could be pretty confident. I mean, it's difficult to say this, this idea of whether somebody's a warrior is really hard, even if you're buried with weapons, doesn't necessarily mean that. But the severity of his injuries, he must have died in battle. So he was terribly wounded or killed in battle and brought back here to this sacred royal space to be buried. Absolutely. So he was here, there was a younger man next to him, and we actually now know through DNA analysis that they were related. So they were father and son. They were essentially buried side by side, and on top of them were At the same time. lots of stones, a sort of rectangular stone setting, which included smashed up pieces of beautiful carved Anglo-Saxon uh, crosses. So here you have what seems to be a pagan burial with weapons, with Thor's hammer, and with essentially the evidence of that smashed up monastery right on top. Anything else in the body you want to tell me about? Well, there is a very, I know exactly what you're asking about. Uh, he had some quite severe injuries, as I said. One of them was a very uh, big wound to his left femur, his left thigh bone, uh, almost certainly made by an axe because it was a properly big V-shaped cut. But he went so uh, closely down diagonal from his left hip that it's almost certain that it would have cut off part of his penis as well. More evidence for, for the likelihood of that is that those who buried him actually placed a boar's tusk in between his legs. Right, so he could still... I love how he like hinted to her, like you know, like the producers are like in his ear like, 
make sure she talks about the penis chopped off. Anything else you want to say? Oh, I know what you're meaning. Man, I salute that man. I'm so sorry. Enjoy life to the full in the afterlife. Presumably that was the reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Good mates. It's that map's fascinating. There's just a cluster of burials right here, just outside the royal crypt. What statement are the Vikings trying to make there? Yeah, I think that's the really key point here in Repton. This isn't a this isn't just something that they do and then move away and forget all about. They are using burial, those funerary rites, as a very political statement. I'm so there. sorry, guys. I, I have to pause. I'm sorry. So that means they're like, oh, no, he's going to go to the afterlife without a penis. Get the bullhorn. <laughs> This is where you used to have your royals, your most important people. But now we're in control, we're in charge, uh, and these are our important dead. So now we have that link that we can show even the next generations that, that this is now essentially Scandinavian territory. And an even more dramatic burial is to be found next door. So we've come to the Vicarage Garden just next to the church now. More evidence here, is there? Yeah, so this is another one of those locations, uh, in fact, if we go over here, where one of those discoveries was made in the 1980s. Back in the 80s, there was a mound here. Okay. And that mound had been known about oh. for a very long time. In fact, it had been dug into uh, by antiquarians. Pesky antiquarians. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They dug the whole huh? thing uh, by antiquarians. Pesky. Antiquarians? The antiquarians. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They dug holes into it. And in fact, there's a record uh, that dates to the 70, early 1700s of somebody who had been asked by the lady of the manor, the manor house that used to be behind us here, to investigate hillocks in the garden. And this workman had dug into it and found this huge deposit of bones. Wow. There was a central uh, skeleton nine foot tall, surrounded by the bodies of 100 humane skeletons, apparently. But the lady of the manor was so uh, horrified by this that she just ordered them to cover it all up again. So back in the 1980s, this was excavated uh, again, this mound, and, uh, and they actually found that bone deposit. But it was inside a building, so it was inside a two-celled uh, stone building, which again was part of that same monastery, uh, same period that the crypt was from just basically right where we're standing now. And it was just full of bones? It was. One compartment was full of bones. They identified almost 300 individuals all crammed into that single space. Okay, so there's no way they died. There's no way there was this, like, massacre where they stuffed in living people and then killed them all and then... Because that would just be too many people. So they just... That was just a bone stockpile. Wow. And do we know that that's Viking era? So the, there's quite a few clues uh, within those bones. We know that they were all what we call secondary deposits. So they were bones that were buried somewhere else originally, and then they were moved when they turned to skeletons and put in place. But among the they bones were also lots of artifacts. So there were Viking weapons, also coins dating to the 870s. So precisely that winter, we know the Viking Great Army was here in Repton. That's pretty good evidence, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good as, as you go. Also coins dating to the okay. 870s good evidence isn't it yeah that's, that's pretty good as, as you go for evidence is that bodies that people have, who died on the campaign they kept them all and buried them in one place this is one of the big questions and i think that that's what's most likely because we would have had hundreds maybe thousands of people dying on those campaigns in battle or for other reasons it's likely they may have been given a temporary burial somewhere at a site but when they came here to Repton, we know that they took over the whole territory. So this was, this was a long-term thing. So I think it's quite likely that they could have gone back, found some of those remains and taken them, given them a, essentially a communal burial somewhere like this, somewhere where they can say, well, this is, this is where we settle now, this is where we are to stay. Welcome to the History Hit YouTube channel. Awesome, I saw that episode. Uh, awesome video. I, I was wondering how they could tell that the bones had been the bodies had been buried one place and then were moved to this place and maybe what like the in the nooks and crannies and cracks inside of the bones maybe there was dirt from the previous burial that didn't match the dirt of the secondary burial and maybe they, they could tell that way anyways really cool video I, it's crazy how much history you guys have over there um just densely packed history where 
there are archaeological finds to be found everywhere and in different layers it, from different time periods. We, we just don't have that over here, and um, I am jealous. Really cool video. Awesome history hit. Great channel. See you guys next time.